Ah, it's Big Wednesday, Big Wednesday. And it's the first Wednesday night after Memorial Day weekend. Normally, we go right into summer sizzle and we're going to have summer sizzle two weeks. So with my new book, Bigger, Better, Bolder Blessings, and everybody I know wants more blessings. So my book on blessings is going to start the 15th of June on Wednesday night. Summer sizzle, the outdoor cooking, the games, all the things. And we have from 6 to 7.15. And then we have fellowship. And I mean, it's fabulous for the next six weeks, the next 40 day challenge on how God is gonna put more blessings upon you. But tonight, 1,000 times more. Did you know in Deuteronomy, God said those exact words? So tonight we're going to be dealing with what did God mean when he says, I want to bless you 1,000 times more. That's in the Bible. That's right there. When he told Moses, he says, I want to bless the people 1,000 times more. That's just, when you read that, well, we're going to read it and, and I'm going to share with you how the release, there's a special release. A, it's not a secret, but yet it is a secret because if people would read it, they would know and they would see and they would experience 1,000 times more. Now think about that, 1,000 times more health, 1,000 times more favor, 1,000 times more doors opening, 1,000 times more uh, of, of blessings of all kinds, children, family. So tonight it is going to be exciting. In fact, I'm very excited because this bir birthing of this word many years ago came in my spirit and I begin to analyze and say, I need to tell the people again about the 1,000 times more. You don't wanna to miss tonight, it will be incredible. And I know that everyone that hears this, you always need more more healing, more health, more favor, more blessings, more opportunities, more grace. And tonight is just going to be fabulous. I'm excited. The first Wednesday night, first Wednesday night in the month of June, two weeks we will start Summer Sizzle and our new series. But tonight I'm so excited. So we're going to go into the service. I can't wait to get it all started. And then I got a few surprise and good things that I'm going to tell you about when I come after the service. So let's go in the service and I can't wait. I can't wait for you to hear the word, how to get 1000 times more. Let's go into the service and worship and we're going to pray for you. And then that word is going to be right here on this streaming just for you. So stand by as we believe that God is going to do something good in your life tonight.
you, Father. Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. darkness over every enemy. Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Come on, let's sing this out together. Oh, shout, shout, Jesus, Jesus from the mountains, Jesus is the
Jesus, where he is, his spirit is, and where his spirit is, there's liberty. This Wednesday night, I want you to repeat our confession. This is our confession. This is what we decree. This is what we believe. We speak it in faith. So as we speak our third John 1, 2, we will go forth in our prayer. So read along with me. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosper. I have the privilege of praying for your prosperity. Those that are tuning in online, I have the privilege of praying for wealth to be upon your life. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we speak the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, oh, Father, in your name, oh, Lord, oh, Father, we know, oh, Lord, that you can heal our finances, oh, Lord. Lord, in your name, oh, Lord, we know that you can give increase, oh, Lord, upon our lives, oh, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, oh, Lord. Lord, we ask, oh, Father, that you give your children power to receive wealth, oh, Lord. Lord, that you give them wisdom, oh, Lord, and ideas that they would go forth, oh, Father God. Lord, and shift their mindset, oh, Lord, and propel them, oh, Lord, into a new place and a new season, oh, Father God. Lord, that you would give them, oh, Lord, vision, oh, Father God, for businesses. You would give them vision, oh, Lord, to be good stewards, oh, Lord. Lord, you would give visions, oh, Lord, oh, Father, they would be able to go forth, oh, Lord, and lead their family, oh, Lord, so they can be a blessing and leave a blessing for not just their generation, but generations to come, oh, Lord. Lord, I speak, oh, Father God, that your prosperity will be upon your children. Lord, I speak blessings, oh, Father God. Lord, and we bind every curse that the enemy tried to put against your children children and we speak and we release your perfect will in Jesus mighty name we say amen amen, amen. 50 years from now people are going to ask you who was your pastor how are you so anointed how are you so rich how are you so healthy come on in here I declare miracles are going to break out in here like a bad rash in about 20 minutes. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every amazing person that has graced these doors today. No one will leave the same as they came. Their bodies are going to be healed. Their pockets are going to be filled. And in the morning, bank accounts are going to get pregnant. Come on in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you believe it? Can I get one person to say a good amen? All right. Trust me, it's going to happen. And God, we thank you tonight. We pray for our minds, Lord. God, we pray that our mind 
would be aligned with your ways because we know that your ways are higher than our own father God we pray for peace that peace to invade us the peace that goes beyond all understanding Jesus father we pray away depression we pray away anxiety father we we pray for complete restoration of mental health in Jesus name Lord whatever we're going through may we always remember that you are leading the way father that you go before us you go behind us and you go all around us in Jesus name we pray we all said amen you may be seated. Watch. When I pray for graduates and believe God for graduates, as you go on your way, that you will have prosperity, you will go on to your great destinations, and you will never give up. I promise you, you will make it to the top. I'm excited about Summer Sizzle starting June 14th and our series, Bigger, Better, Bolder Blessings from a new book. I'm excited about the blessings and the 90 day challenge in which we are believing for blessings. The children are going to have blow ups. The young people are going to have basketball. They're going to have games. We're going to have outside cooking. There's going to be gospel singing and there's going to be all kinds of things happening starting June 14th on Wednesday night. Summer Sizzle. See you there. something that will help you tonight right now everybody in the building the Bible said speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs everybody say spiritual songs, spiritual songs. singing and making melody in your heart I just I want to I want to I want to tell you that scriptures is saying if you want to be filled with the Spirit, you got to make yourself make melody. Meaning, the Scriptures are saying to us, we're not going to feel like singing. So we got to make the melody. And when we make the melody, the Bible says that you will be filled with His Spirit. Come on, open up your mouth. Make yourself. doesn't matter what you've been through. We're going to sing this again. Come on. Whether you can sing or you can't sing, just begin to quote those words. Come on. Jesus in the street. Jesus in the dark 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What about about six or seven? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. What about five or six hallelujahs? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. You got to make melody in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What about about five? Praise God, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What about three? You're great, Jesus. You're great, Jesus. You're great, Jesus. You're great. Oh, you're incredible. Oh, somebody just brag on Jesus. Just say, Lord, you're great. You're incredible. You're phenomenal. You're not doing that to me. You're doing that to him. Oh, Lord, you're great. Now let everybody clap your hands and make him feel welcome. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you. Wow, God. Hallelujah. What a great God. He's a good God. Oh, he is a good God. Mighty is God. Holy is God. Holy is God. Holy is God. Holy, it's all right. Holy. Somebody give about 10 holies. Holy. 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 Oh, Jesus on the mountain. Jesus on the mountain. Jesus in the stream. Jesus in the dark. three of those. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to somebody, turn to somebody and say, the Lord is in this place. Just say that right now. Thank you, singers. That was good. Thank you. Thank you, singers. That was good. Open the curtain over there for them. Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. You may be seated. The Lord is good. I'm reading from the book of um, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, a very powerful book, a book in which God speaks very cl clearly and profoundly in the book of Deuteronomy. There's no monitors up here for me. It'd be good if I could hear myself, please. Deuteronomy, everybody say Deuteronomy. So I'm gonna tell you what God says about you. Turn, turn you and take your journey. Now, I don't know what journey you're taking, everybody, where you're going, how you're going to do it. Some of you are praying, making plans to go to Disney World. Trust me, that is a place you need to have God for your journey. Hambers are expensive and the lines are long. You've got to have a lot of God in that journey. Whatever journey you're taking, 
And God begins to say, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto the places nigh unto the, un, uh, thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the south seas of the land. God is talking about all the places that he's getting ready to send his people, and he's going to bless them, Canaanites, unto Lebanon, unto the great river, and the river of Euphrates. By the way, let me just stop there. Did you know there, there is a prophecy about the river of Euphrates? In the Bible, it said the end of time will come when Euphrates is dried up. Last week, Euphrates dried up. After thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the Euphrates River dried up. And the Bible says in the last days, in the days before the end of the earth, in fact, the Bible says out of that dry bed Euphrates that the spirit of Abias or the spirit of the enemy will come out. Demons will come out of that place. And so Euphrates, that's, a, that's just another prophecy, but Euphrates was a, a place in which was a great wonder river in which people just were amazed at the vastness of the river Euphrates. So God was telling them uh, it's a great river. And, and we're going to go to the next verse. And uh, the eighth verse says, uh, Behold, I have set the land before you. I want to say to everybody, 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 God has set everything before you. Okay? He has set your houses before you. He has set your cars before you. He has set your jobs before you. He has set good things before you. He's got all kinds of great things in which he's going to do for you. He has set the land before you. You need to say amen before it happens because God has said, I've set it before you. I've set health before you. I've set your family before you. I've set good things before you. Now God says, go in and possess the land which the Lord, and now the Lord says, I swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them and to their seed after them, you knowing that God made covenant with Abraham and said, Abraham, I'm going to make you very, very rich and I'm going to make your seed very, very rich God is going off here. God's doing the talking here. This is not Moses. This is God's talking, even though Moses is writing it down. The next verse says, in the ninth verse, I've spake unto you at that time, saying, I am, I am not able to bear you myself alone. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you uh, myself alone. And the next verse clearly defines, the Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, you are this day as the stars of the heaven for multitude. Now tonight, if it is a clear night, if the rains don't come, go out tonight and try to count the stars and you will find, if you can count them, it'll take you a while, probably all night long, but did you know that when you look at the stars that the circumference of your eyes can only take in so many stars at, if you don't move your head, if you do not move your head and your eyes are focused, you will count so many stars and besides that, you won't be able to count them all, but there's multitudes and multitudes of, of stars. If you were to move your head two inches, there would be another multitude and multitude and multitude and multitude of thousands and thousands of stars and, and, so, and so when he says here, look, go back to that scripture verse. And when he says in this scripture verse, for the Lord your God hath multiplied you, behold, you are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Now God's got something on his mind for his people and he is going off on his people about I'm going to bless you I'm going to I am going to multiply I am I am this is God talking then God really goes off in this verse are you ready for this verse in Deuteronomy 1 and 11 God says the Lord God your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are well, that's five of you that we're excited about that. We need to read that again. That, that's God talking. For the Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as you are. What is he saying? What you have right now, I want to give you a thousand times more. 
That's God talking. That's God talking. Keep your mouth shut and stare at it and say, I don't believe you, God. I don't think that's true. That can't happen in my lifetime. You tell God that. God says, I want, God is excited in this passage, and he is telling the people, the people of God, he's telling the people he's called just like all of you, and he is saying, he's so excited, he's just going off. I'm going to multiply you like the stars. I'm going to give you Canaan. I'm going to give you the Euphrates. I'm going to give you this river. I'm going to give you this state. I'm going to give you that. And you know what? Most of you are sitting there saying, how in the world can that be? And guess what? It's not happening to you because that's the attitude that God will reject. The people that say amen the fastest, the people that say I believe it the fastest, the people that say, oh God, if you said it, I believe it, the people that amen him the fastest, the people that sing the fastest, the people that say there's no problem with me, I believe it, I believe what God says. Mm Mm-hmm. This is God talking. Oh, that was for Israel. That was for that time. No, no. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 1,000 times more. One, the banks can't guarantee you that. Stocks and bonds cannot guarantee you that. In fact, it is good to say that it's almost impossible that anything on a continuous base can be said that anything in life can bless you a 1,000 times more But God says, I'm going to bless you a thousand times more. And then you you might say, how in the world can that be? Well, I'm going to excite you tonight that the same God that talked in the book of Deuteronomy was here tonight that you sang to. And he's a God that says, I'm the God of yesterday, today, and forever. I change not I want to bless you. Anybody ready for 1,000 times more? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, You're just trying to get me excited. You're 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 just trying to motivate me. You're just trying to stimulate me, pastor, to be in a good mood, et cetera. I just want to tell you the reason why that this passage is not read probably more often than then just reading it every now and then is because it is almost so overwhelming that your faith to grasp it is just shaking its head saying a thousand times more. How can that? And we're not just talking about money. We're talking about health. And we're not talking about just you. We're talking about your children and then your children's children and then your children's children. We're not... And we're talking about everything you touch, everywhere you go. There's a thousand times blessing. Things happen. Things just go on. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for God to show up, show out, show off, and do his thing. God is, if I can use this terminology, God is dying to be believed. God is begging to be believed. Now, man didn't say this. Moses didn't say it. A prophet didn't say this. Elijah didn't say it. it. No, no, no person said this. This was God talking. How do you get God to talk like that? How do you get him in a good mood? You want to see a bad mood of God? Well, let me take you to the 14th chapter of Numbers and let me show you how bad God can talk, how bad his people can tick him off. For in the 14th chapter of Numbers, he begins to say things like this in the 27th verse. He says, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation? He didn't say sinners. Saved people. Who saved? Who saved? Who saved? If you're Savior in the congregation, then he says something. This is, this, this is how you tick God off, which murmur against me. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? 
And then God reminds you, I don't have any hearing aids. I am not deaf. You may think I'm an old God, but my hearing is good. I have heard thy murmuring, murmurings of the children of Israel, which thou murmurest against me. God's taking it personal. Say unto them. Oh, the next verse says, say unto them. Now, I told you all the good things that God wants to do for you. Let me tell you how you could tick him off. Say unto them, as truly as I live. This is God talking. Saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Next verse. Next verse. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. And all that were numbered of you, according to the whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Next verse says, Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you to dwell therein, say Caleb and Joshua. Now, let me just tell you, that's numbers. Now, numbers is before Deuteronomy. What comes before Deuteronomy? What comes before Deuteronomy? What is, what is the book before Deuteronomy? Numbers. Numbers. So, so in order, God is, is already spoken to Moses. He's taken the people. There are 605,000 men. He is saying to the 605,000 men that are over 20, you will not enter into the promised land. Are you ready for this? Ready for this? Are you ready that they were only two, 14 days away from the promised land? But when they started murmuring against God, he stopped them in the tracks, made them go in a circle for 40 years until 605,000 men that were over 20 years of age died in the wilderness. Are you going in circles? Are you going in circles? Same thing just happened to you year after year? It, it's not moving forward. Things are not. I just keep going in a circle. There's a secret here. There's a secret. There's a secret from ticking God off and getting God in a position to point his finger at you. Say, I'm going to give you a thousand times more. What's, what, what, how can I get God to do things for me and not be mad at me? Stop murmuring. Stop murmuring. How many of you have employees that work for you and they murmur? Not very many own businesses. So you must be the employees. Do you murmur? Do you murmur about your boss? Do you murmur about your country? Do you murmur about your neighbors? Do you have any control over your mouth? Because murmuring seems to be the thing that God goes into convulsions and brings judgment because of murmuring. Boy, it's real quiet in here. I'm not, everybody must have something going on. You, you, you must have said something you shouldn't have said. You, shouldn't, you must have complained about something you shouldn't have complained about. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. You get that under the blood and say, Lord, deliver me from that. Did you know, did you know that God tells you in his word that who you work for, regardless of the pay, you may be worth more, you, may, you, you deserve more, you should get more, but did you know that the Bible says that God says when you work for somebody, do it like you're doing it for me, God says. Did you notice know that? Did you know that? And that God said, just enjoy the moment because just act like you're working for me, even though the boss is paying you, even though that company's paying you, even though they haven't worth you, worth you, worth you, worth you, because already you're in the complaining category because you feel like you are worth more. But if you do it with cheerfulness to say, I, I know that they're not treating me right, but I'm doing this like God. To God, I'm going to do this unto you. How many knows God's big enough to take you out of that situation 
and put you in a better situation. So, so many of you probably think, oh, you know, you know, you know, you, we, in the month of May, we had miracles and we came and we gave, the, uh, we gave our resumes and, and, you know, here we did, and pastor, you did all that stuff, et cetera. Here, there, I gave it. Did you know that we had one person come and say, give me all the resumes and need to forewarn everybody that when Social Security calls you, it's not calling about your Social Security, it's calling about hiring you. They took all of the, they took all of it. Because it says Social Security is hiring hundreds and hundreds of people. I need all of them. I don't know if that'll fit your, uh, fit your demeanor or fit what your desires are. But the fact is, is that God will put you through a test to see if you will murmur. Because if you will murmur about the little things, he already knows you will murmur about the big things. And there is nothing that can be done about your murmuring. And you know what God said? If you read Deuteronomy, you will find that God says, you know what? They ticked me off 10 times. In other words, it took 10 tick-off times of murmuring until God said, I'm sick of them. They have ticked me off 10 times. And they should have been not murmuring simply because the angel was sent on the night of Passover and delivered every one of their, none of their firstborn were killed. Then all of a sudden he let them out of the land they'd been in slavery for 490 years. And then the Red Sea opened up and they went through it. And the army that was coming behind them, which is Pharaoh's, drowned in the Red Sea. And then on the other side, God began to feed them and do miracles. And in a matter of weeks after all of that, they started started murmuring and saying, I want to go back to where I came from. Because the spirit of murmuring is a demon spirit that will always take you back to the beginning. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to the beginning. I've come too far by faith. My mother used to sing a song, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, we trust in, and that's when we had choir then, and all the men would go, we trusted, because I was in the choir and I remember the men's part was, we trusted in his holy word. And then the soprano would go, leaning on the Lord. Remember that, Mom? So the key is, We've come this far by faith. I don't want to murmur because murmuring will take me back to zero. Have you murmured about your wife? You're murmuring about your husband. You're murmuring about your kids. You're murmuring about your job. You're murmuring about your money. You're murmuring about the gas. You're murmuring. You've got to remember that murmuring turns God into a judgment God and will swear and say, you will never, ever get to where I intended you to go. Now, let's illustrate this a little more to show you how God is, is I've come tonight to give you this word. He wants to bless you 1,000 times more. How fast can you believe that? How fast? How fast? That took a little while, eh? Oh, oh. You know why you can't clap fast? It's because there is a spirit of murmuring on you. Too much negativity comes out of your mouth. Instead of thinking positive, you think negative. When somebody tells you, hey, I believe this is going to happen. I don't believe it till I see it. There's a, there's, a, there's a murmuring. It's in all of us. We have to fight it. We have to get control of it. Oh, let me take you. Let me show you what's, what's happening here. God is getting ready to bless his people. He's so excited. He said, look, I made a deal. I made a deal with your, your fathers. I made a deal with Abraham, your fathers, many years ago. And he says, I'm so excited. I got you out. Here we go. Going to give you the Canaanites. Going to give you the Amorites. Going to give you the river of Euphrates. I'm going to give you the promise. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. I am going to give you. I'm just so excited. You're my children. I'm just so excited. And, and 
And God got to that point in Deuteronomy that we read tonight in the first chapter. But something happened in that which God said, let's go. And he started delivering him. He started doing stuff for him. I mean, how? Let me, let me, let me uh, show you something. People sometimes say these words. If I see the miracle, then I will believe it. If I see blinded eyes open, and if I see people come out of the wheelchairs, or if I see the dead coming, then I'll believe it. May I propose to you and tell you and prove to you scripturally, even if you see it, you still will not believe until you make up in your mind you don't have to see it. You believe it in a way. Now let's repeat that. People say, when I see it, I will believe it. God's faith, God's mechanism, God's currency. This is God's currency. You want to move God, you can't move God with this kind of attitude. God, when I see it, and I know that you said you would do it, and I can't wait till you do it, and when you do it, then I will believe it. God immediately goes into rejection. Categorize that kind of thinking into murmuring category. And God waits and says, I need you to believe it before. I need you to believe it and not see it and know that I'm going to do it because what pleases me, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, go, go to Hebrews 11. What pleases me, everybody say, what pleases God. Hebrews 11, and the first verse, of course, says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11, that's 25, 1, thank you. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You should, we should repeat that. We should read that three times. Ready? Everybody, read it out loud with me. Three times. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let's read it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let's read it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what God is saying. He's saying you can hope for it, you can believe for it, but don't let your five senses get in the way of your faith. What is, what is my five senses? The five senses of the body, of course, is taste, smell, hear, see, touch. God says, uh-uh, no, no, no. I'm not using body senses to operate the miraculous in your body or in your life. I am a God of faith. I am a God that says you cannot see it, you cannot taste it, you cannot hear it, you cannot touch it. You believe it. This is me, God. God says, this is how I operate. I don't change. I'm not doing any less or any more for anybody else. I tell you, I will only, I will only do that which people cannot see, cannot hear, cannot taste, cannot touch, cannot hear, and believe. I, God, I know you're, you're about to open up, but I just believe it. All right? All right? All right? All right? It gets more serious than that about faith. Look at the sixth verse. You mind going to the sixth verse? Sixth verse, Hebrews 11. This is God. Oh, what? 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 No, that can't be in there. That's wrong. That's wrong. You, you should put that on the screen. That is not in the Bible. Can't be in the Bible. That's not right. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. I thought, I, I thought my worship pleased him. I thought, I thought my singing pleased him. I thought my tithing pleased him. I thought I'd go to church pleased him. What? Without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe he is. Oh, I like it. I know this is in the last part. 
and that everybody everybody with me and that everybody ready out loud and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him may I propose to you you can't do it one time you got to keep diligently go go keep keep move move believe believe and because we are all human we have the temptation to murmur. The minute we murmur, God will go into swearing judgment on your life. Doesn't matter about the covenants of, well, we are now under the law of grace, and, or we are, excuse me, we are under the dispensation of grace, and God's got great mercy. One scripture verse says, let me tell you, we that have been saved by grace, we are accounted more responsible than those that didn't have the grace under the law. And you sit there and murmur when all the things that God has done for you, forgiving you of your sins, never to be remembered again, making you a brand new creature, giving you heaven, giving you eternal life, giving you John 3. You're bored with it tonight. We were reading John 3. Oh, beloved, I wish above all things that thou will prosper. You sit there with your hands folded saying, ha, that's no big deal. It's a big deal. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And may I get a little strong here today because we got a bunch of Pharisee religious people that get mad at preachers who preach prosperity. Well, let me tell you, my God is not a little tiny God and my God is not broke, busted, or disgusted. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns all the gold. He owns all the silver. And he gives power to get wealth. He does, he does, he does, he does. Get rid. Stop it. Stop drinking coffee with the demon of murmur. And if anybody joins in with you, they're just as possessed as you either want to be possessed or already possessed of murmuring. First of all, if you're murmuring, the reason why you're murmuring is because you don't know who your source is. You're murmuring against the government. You're murmuring against the person that rents from you. You're murmuring against the person that works for you. You're murmuring. And you have no earthly idea what your source or who your source is. So when God tells you, when you're working for somebody over you, just start enjoying and just sweeping that broom or doing what you're doing and saying, I'm not doing this for you, boss. I'm doing this for God. Because if God sees that I am enjoying without murmuring, I'll be buying your business. Let me see if I can get this right. Let me see if I can get this right, this story. Let me, let me see if I can get it right. So the lady broke up with the man because he was a janitor. And she said to him, you cannot fit my needs in life because I'm a Versace, I'm a, I'm a Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton, Louis, is that all right? Louis Vuitton. I am, I'm Rolls Royce. And you're a janitor. She married a rich person. Evidently, she was experiencing great wealth in her life when 15, 20 years later, there was a banquet of some kind, and she ran into her old boyfriend. And she says, I want to introduce to you my rich, rich husband janitor so she goes and gets her rich rich husband he comes and she says to the janitor this is my rich husband we'll call him Bob this is poor Job rich Bob said to her that's my boss <laughs> oh I like that The reason why you're never going to get to the next level of your life is because you murmur. And you will find that people that murmur never get to the next life. 
and they turn their murmuring into complaining about people who have good things and all they do is gripe about what they have and what they don't have and they're jealous and they will and they will and they will tweet on you and they will facebook on you and they will do everything else they can to lie about you because they're jealous because they don't like because what you have they don't have and they're murmuring and they're complaining and they will die with a grudge they will die with unforgiveness and they will use everything they will use woke they will use all of the liberality of life and flesh and they will do everything to let you know I'm protesting what are you protesting I am protesting what are you protesting I am protesting what that I'm over here and you're over there. So I'm gonna break your window, I'm gonna steal your stuff because I'm over here. It won't matter how much you steal because the Bible's already told me that whatever the enemy steals from me, I get seven times more back. I'm not even gonna murmur about your breaking my window. Sourness, blame game, twist the conversation. I could have been that, but then this happened to me, etc. The moment that you go into murmuring, I can tell you the announcement of what God says about you. You murmur, you die right where you are. Your carcass right there. You're not going to make any more. Nothing's going to happen to you. In fact, I'm going to send a peasantly and take you out earlier than you're supposed to be taken out because this is my world. It's not the devil's world. And I'm tired of hearing. Did you read that? Hearing. I've heard there. Did you hear me? I have heard that. Come on, help me. I have heard, and I don't want you on the planet. Oh, let me tell you another one. This will blow your mind. We murmur. You think you do it under your breath. But the accuser of the brethren's got a great sound system. He puts it right into your mouth. It's blasting throughout eternity. The devil's looking at God and looking at you at the same time. Look at him. Listen to him. Listen to him. And you don't think anybody's hearing you because you're... But the devil's got you. Hey, turn it on. Hey, this is mic number 27. It's got a... Give me a good mic. That's a devil mic. Here, give me a good mic. Black mic. This good mic. And the devil puts it up against your mouth. And sits there and says, listen to him. And you think nobody's heard you. But under your breath you have said, oh, <sighs> And the devil's tiptoeing behind you. You hear him? Kill him. Kill him. You don't like people like that. I've been working for a year on that person. Then I worked on their daddy and put the curse on them to get in their bloodline. Come on, when you, for the Bible said he is the accuser of the brethren. Not of the world, of the sinner. Who is getting you in a conversation to murmur where you are? Because if you don't stop murmuring, we'll be burying you or cremating you. And your name is all that's going to be remembered on a tombstone with a hyphen shorter than your life. All because of murmuring. Now, do we get tempted to murmur? Absolutely. Do we get tempted to say something? We shouldn't say absolutely. But thank God the thing we need to do is get our tongue in the blood of Jesus. Get our tongue in the blood of Jesus. Our tongue, life or death, life or death, life or death. Are you speaking death or are you speaking life? I got to hear somebody say it. Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? And let me tell you about murmuring. Let me tell you about murmuring. Keep people out of your mouth that you want to talk about. God can take care of them. It don't matter how bad they are. We don't need your tongue 
to advertise their problem. Because if you advertise their problem, the devil's going to make sure that somebody advertises your problem. That's the reason why the Bible says, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Even though somebody may know something on you, deliver us from evil. Let God fight for you. Let the angels be charged over you. Let God take care of that situation. Right? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Say, so well, that's the Old Testament, Pastor, and I know I read the Old Testament and there's a lot of judgment and not that. Well, let's read the, let's read the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10. This is the New Testament. Neither murmur ye. As who? As some of them that also murmured. Well, who are you talking about? Talking about Deuteronomy. Talking about those people I delivered. And they were destroyed of the destroyer. Who's the destroyer? God. Now you think God loves. He does. But there's another side of God. You don't ever want to see that side of God. And the Bible says these things happen. And the next verse says this. All of these things happen. This is New Testament. This is 1 Corinthians, New Testament. Now, all of these things happen unto them for our example. And they are written. Everything in the Old Testament is written for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, let me just, let me show you what happened. Fast track. God, God, it's real hot up here. I know we got brand new air conditions. I don't know if they're working or not up here, but we will get our money back soon. There I go murmuring. Jesus, forgive me, Lord. Just let it be hot. I just want to burn up here. It's all great. See there? See how, see how the temptation of murmuring goes on? So God already said, I'm going to give you the land. I'm going to give you Euphrates. I'm going to give you all the stuff. So they have 12 tribes. Each tribe averaged about 120,000 people. Remember Israel, there's nearly 2 million. They're divided up into 12 tribes. Everybody say 12 tribes. 12 12's a, 12's a, a, a biblical number. You, you remember that because there are 12 gates to the city. There's 12 gates to New Jerusalem City. When we go to heaven, there's 12 gates. Three gates on the east, three gates on the west. Three gates on the south and three gates on the north. Have you heard of the city? The city, it's made of gold. Anyway, that's an old song. So there's, there's 12 gates to the city of Jerusalem. When we all go to heaven, that's where we're going, to the new Jerusalem Amen. to go. So 12. You will notice that God, also through Jesus, had 12 disciples. 12 means governmental order. 12 means governmental order. So he had Moses and Aaron to divide the people up into 12 groups, 12 tribes, okay? And they all, and they all named after Jacob's sons. Okay, what do we learn, class? How many was two... How many, how many were divided up? How, how many, how, uh, the two million people, what was it divided up into? How many groups? And those groups were called? You get an A over here. <laughs> tribes. So the tribes, 120,000 in the average population of, of, of a tribe, there was three on the east side, three on the west side, three on the north side, three on the south side. Now, the east side, you will notice, the east side's very interesting. We're going to throw this in. This is free. You don't have to pay for this, but you would have to go to school a long time to know this. It's worth about $50 per person to have this information, but I'm just going to give it to you free. God always had his tabernacle facing east. Why? Toward Eden. Eden is paradise. Always they prayed toward the east. When Daniel was in um, Babylon, he opened up his window and prayed toward the east. 
I'm in an airplane going to India, and on the plane, prayer starts in five minutes. We Christians are afraid to even pray at the table, but not the Muslims. They're up in the air. They pray every three hours. And, and, on, and on the TV set uh, that you have at your seat, they'll say prayer in 10 minutes, prayer in five minutes. And all the Muslims get up, go to the back of the plane, they face the east wherever we're going, and they pray. You ever see them at the airport? They're on their knees. They'll always be facing east. East is a blessing. East, is, there is entrance of God. East, I could talk about east all day long. So God puts... Three tribes on the east, and one of the tribes are Judah. And he purposely puts Judah there because Judah means praise. And God required on the east side, because that's where God was, that there might be praise first. And that when they marched, they always put Judah in the front. Because God's... Oh. Where is God? Where is God? He's in the praises of his people. So they put Judah out in the front so that God would lead the two million people. You want, you want to go somewhere? Start praising God and you'll go somewhere. Okay, now. So there are, there are 12 groups. In this group is Joshua, Caleb, and 12 other guys. Now, now listen to this, very important. How were these men chosen? They were chosen by their 120. It was like an election. It was like, uh, it was, it was like an election. Let's send the best spiritual man because Moses said that he needs 12. We need a good representative. We're going to go to the land, spy it out, come back, tell us, man, it's going to be great. And that's where we're going. They did not choose negative people. They did not sort out from within them to say, hey, no, that guy's positive. That guy is positive. That, we need to send him. We vote him in. So there was a representative from each tribe. Twelve went. They went to the land. They spied it out. You'll read about this in the Bible. They spied out the land. And, and God had already told them, I'm going to give you the land. And I really don't know whose idea it was for them to come up to go spy the land. They should have just believed God and not peeked. Can I say something to everybody? If you peek on what God's got for you, you probably will be negative because you won't believe it. Oh, you didn't get that. No, I know what you're saying. Well, if I saw it, I'd know it. No, 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 no. They went and saw it. Grapes, you know how big grapes were? The grapes, this is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. One grape was as big as this right here. One grape. You ever, you ever shop for grapes? You ever saw a grape? Grapes you pick off the vine? Yeah, grape. They were so big, it took two men to carry one vine because the grapes were this big. Oh, come on, pastor. No, no. Read it for yourself. The grapes were gigantic. The land was unbelievable. It was green. It was, un it was just incredible. And when they got back, 10 of them said, we can't take the land. Because there are giants over there. And watch this. This is how negative people are. The murmurs and negative people spit and jump. <laughs> and jump. Murmur, negative people, spit. <laughs> and jump. Because when you're negative, you become a spitter. And a jumper. You don't say in one place. So the ten said, we are like grasshoppers. We spit and jump. Because we're the size of a grasshopper compared to those giants that's over there. We can't take the land, take the money, take the vision, take the dream. Can't take what, what God's got planned for us. We can't take it. We can't take it. And two guys say, we can do it. Now, let's attest. Here's a test. Everybody ready? I'm almost, you got to get this. I'm almost done here. Does anybody, without looking in the Bible, know one name of the ten murmurs negative, claiming they were grasshoppers? Does anybody know any name? 
Ah, that ought to prove to you when you become murmuring a negative person, you will be forgotten. Ain't nobody going to remember you no more. You think you can operate and everything hinges on me and don't think somebody can take your place. Ah, let me tell you, baby, anybody can take your place. You're not the one running this thing. It's a God thing. God's running this kingdom. That's a fact. Watch God real quick. Watch God. He's listening. Now, these 10 people got to do what? They got to go back to their tribes to 120,000, averaging 90,000, and convince them to murmur too. Is it possible that there's somebody on your job, in your family, your neighbor, or even you live with somebody who's negative? Who's trying to convince you it ain't gonna happen. Watch this. And got those people to murmur and they didn't even go and see it. But was convinced by another NBC, TV. oh, God bless you, we love you very much. And, and Fox and whatever we take for granted and listen to everything and believe everything and just hook, sinker. I believe it. Read People's Magazine. I know this happened to Brad Pitt. I know Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, but you don't even know Brad Pitt. Somebody told you something and you're repeating something on Beyonce. You don't know these people. You don't know their hearts. Besides, you shouldn't waste your time talking about them. You should be talking about, well, Beyonce's leading the way. I'll be next. You ought to see my dance and my song, and you ought to see the concert I'm getting ready to do. Oh, baby, move over, because I'm telling you, I got a song and I got a dance. See, all of you looking at me say, well, I'm too old. I'm 45. I can't look like her. Go to the doctor. Get surgery. Do something. But you can, do, you can look. You can dream. You can believe. Yeah. Colonel Sanders was 65. Listen to this. Colonel Sanders was 65 years old. He had, in the book I read, they said he had 990 some no's to his chicken recipe. His trunk was filled with kettles and skillets and oil and the back seat always was filled with a couple of chickens. And everywhere we go, I got the best chicken. You ought to taste it here. Let me tell you about it. This is a good country fried, finger looking good chicken. And he cooked and cooked and got no, no, no. Will you go in business with me? No, no, no. People will like my finger looking good chicken. No, 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 no. You're 65, old man. You got white hair. You got a, you're bending up. Thin, and he just kept cooking chickens and finding somebody said, I think that'll work. And then that person got an agreement. So when two get an agreement, the Bible said things happen. Why don't you find somebody to agree what is about to happen to your dream and, and believe? There's a turnaround, okay? All right? And you know what? Let me take a good look at most of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've all had it. I can see it. Tavon, you've had some. You've had some finger licking. Dave, you've had some finger licking. You don't want to admit it, but you've had some finger. Some of you are going to say, I can't wait to get out of here because tonight I'm going straight to finger licking good chicken. And all the naysayers and all the negative people said it would never happen. 65 years old. 900 and some no's. You're going to get 900 no's in your life. Your relatives are going to say no. People you know are going to say no. People are going to say it'll never happen. You just got to get up in your faith and say, I got a God that he is behind me. He is with me. And that dream will come to tr pass because I believe it. And I want everybody in this room and everybody watching me tonight in just the next few minutes, I want, you to, I want you to get so much faith that you're going to believe as God said, I'm going to bless you 1,000 times more. You know what? You know what? God said, you're negative. 
you murmur, you'll never see it. You're going to die, and you're going to go in a circle. Forty years. God said, I will wait till every man over 20 years of age. And 606,000 men died because they believed somebody else's report. Whose report are you going to believe? I said, whose report are you going to believe? I said, whose report are you going to believe? The doctor's report or God's report? Are you going to believe the government's report or God's report? Are you going to believe God can do it or are you going to believe somebody telling you it can't be done? And there was two guys. Two guys. And guess what? I like this part. They were 80. You remember the positive guys, don't you? Tell me the names. You'll always remember Colonel Sanders' name. You'll always remember Joshua and Caleb. Here's the good part, folks. The Bible said they were 80. Meaning there were 40 40 years ago, but now they're 80. And God said, because you didn't murmur and complain, you guys are the only old guys that get to go in. But you know what Caleb said? He said, I may be 80. Read it. But I, I, I know I'm 40. In another, the new 80 could be the new 70. The 70 could be the new 60. The, the 60 may not be there. Don't put me in an age category. You need to retire. You need to just go here. Said, no, no. You don't know who I am. And Caleb said, I may be 80, but I feel like I'm 40. I'm going to take that mountain. Do you read that? Right? He said, give me that mountain. Some of you are trying to be old when God's trying to make you young. You look at your birthday and you need to just say, scratch, God's made me this age, but boy, I feel like I'm a, whoa, I just feel like I'm a, oh my goodness, hallelujah. I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the victory side. And ending, help me, Tavon, thank you. When the 40 years was over with, God got so excited because now he had positive people. I guess you'd be positive. Hey, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Son, I love you too. But you know, son, I just wish we were back being beaten and I wish our women were being slaughtered and I wish we were back eating lentils. And this Moses guy and the pastor, he's crazy. Daddy, I wouldn't talk like that. Well, I'm talking like that, son. You better get it in your head. Because you're headed for a dead-end street in this whole business of Moses. But that 20-year-old said, Daddy, I'm not getting that spirit. I believe Joshua and Caleb. He could go either way, but he refused to go the Daddy's way of murmuring and complaining. And there was a new generation. And that new generation said, we can take the land. And that's when God got so excited. He didn't even tell them this when he came out of the land. He said, I gave you everything. Everything you want, I'll give it to you. He got so excited. He said, I'm going to give you a thousand times more. Everybody shout out, thousand times more. I'm going to pray a prayer and I'm going to ask God. The minute it touches you, you have the opportunity to say, I don't believe it, I don't know how it's going to happen, etc. And it'll get off of you and it'll go to the next person. But let the person in this room say, I received the prayer of blessing of 1,000 times more. 1,000 times more of health, 1,000 times more blessing on my children, 1,000 times more money, 1,000 times more opportunity, 1,000 times more favor. How fast, how fast can your faith travel? How fast can you believe for the impossible? And can you take 
The spirit that's fighting inside of you of murmuring, complaining, and I don't have no money, my bills, etc. Et How many of you can rise up within yourselves and say, Satan, get behind me. My God is getting ready to deliver me. Don't know how, don't know when, but God is on my side. And if God is on my side, who can be against me? How fast? Everybody sit down. I'm going to see this. How fast? Can your faith operate? Or are you chained? And you no longer, you've been through so many stuff. And let me tell you, you can blame everybody you want to, the devil, your mother-in-law, but let me tell you something. You're where you're at because your mouth got you there. You spoke something into existence and it lived. Whether it was death talk or life talk. Because the power's in your tongue. But when God starts listening to people who start saying, God, I believe. I believe that you are an impossible God. People say, I won't be rich, but God, I believe you will make me rich. Let the poor say, I am rich. God, I believe the blessings are going to come. I believe, God, the opportunities are going to come. God, that preacher, that Pastor Steve up there is, is saying he's going to speak a thousand blessings according to scriptures. I want to show you how fast my faith is. I want to show the devil I'm done talking murmuring. I'm done talking death talk. I rebuke you. Somebody shout, I rebuke you. Say it, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, get off of me. Get out of my mind. Get behind me. All negativity. All murmuring. I rejoice in the Lord. I'm going to lift my hand, and when I lift my hand, as fast as you can stand in the presence of this prayer, you begin to believe that when I pray a thousand times more, if you're watching me get up out of that couch, out of that bed, wherever you are, and stand when I lift my hands and get ready for God to look for some faith people to believe a thousand times more is coming on my life. My hand is lifted. In the name of Jesus and God's holy word, let a thousand times more come Just stand in his presence. He's so proud of everybody. He's looking at you saying, I know what you had to do to get up. I, I know what you thought. I, I, I've heard some things that you've gone go through. But tonight is a new night. Tonight is the beginning of summer. Tonight is a marking of Wednesday after Memorial Day. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The promised land. The promised land. The blessing. The blessing. It's coming on me. It's coming on me. I'm not going to murmur. I'm not going to complain. Because God's getting ready to make it up to you. More than your boss. More than the government. More than anybody. How many tonight will say, Pastor, I have learned something from the Word of God. How many will say amen? How many will say this message, this word from God was for me? Say amen. Amen. I believe this. Believe this, all of you. What a great 
summer crowd. I can't believe this many people came out to Memorial Day, but look, we all clap to each other. Look at all this. Look at all of these people, believers. I mean, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal summer Wednesday night. So in the thousand blessing, you will be healed. You'll be delivered. Strange things are going to happen to you. Let me tell you one thing, and then we're about ready to go here. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Some of you may, you may not know it, but there's an angel coming to your house. You've already got angels, and but remember what happened? You remember what happened to Joshua and Caleb? When God said, go get it, go get the thousand times more. And they start out as a man on the road. Joshua said, who are you? Who are you? You foreigners are against us. We're going to have to fight you. And the man said, no. I have to be, I happen to be the captain of the host of the army of God from heaven. And I've come here to lead you to your promised land. So in the morning, when you get in your car, don't be surprised if there's an angel in the back seat. Don't be surprised an angel's on your job. Don't be surprised that an angel's at the store. Don't be surprised he meets you on your front doorstep. Anybody excited about 1,000 times more? If you're not a believer tonight, become a believer. And for every one of you going through lawyer, judgments, whatever you're going through with your children, whatever, I'm telling you, there's an anointing. Believe it. Whatever you're going through, God has released a thousand times more power. A thousand times more than your lawyer can do. A thousand times more than your doctor can do. A thousand times more than your bank can do. Your stocks can do and all. And let me hear a good hallelujah. Aren't you glad you came? Turn to somebody and say, boy, I'm glad I came tonight. I'm on top of my situation. You may be seated for one minute. One minute. Everybody get your phones out. Everybody that wants to give by envelope. We're going to take the Wednesday night offering. Thank you for the Pentecost offering. I don't have all the totals, but I will let you know. I will write you. But that was a great gift that you gave to God. And today we continue the journey. So we continue our offering. So ushers are moving quickly in the balcony and moving on the main floor. There are containers. And so tonight as we give, as we give an offering, learn to give an offering. It's five dollars, twenty-five dollars, whatever. You that are watching, now give with everyone as we give. As we give freely, whatever God has given you. How many has eaten the word of God tonight? So as you begin to give successfully, I see phones out. I see you giving by phones. I see, I see you writing. You're writing. You must be writing on the envelopes. That's fine. Ushers are moving. They're moving now. Father, the name of Jesus. Let every person and the spirit and this anointing of a thousand times more. In two weeks, I will start the new series of my book. You'll be able to get it in the bookstore, I believe. Bigger, Better, Boldness, Blessings. We will take the service from 6 to 7.15. We're over now, but at 7.15, we will break. We'll have all the food on the parking lot. It's going to be fun, all the games, all the children. We're going to have a blast. And for six Wednesday nights, we're going to have a royal sizzle time with singing and dancing. It's going to be great. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody that the container has passed you, please stand so I know. So I know the container has passed you. If you gave up phone, please hold your phone up. Let the Spirit of the Lord. You're doing good in the balcony. Thank you. Balconies operating. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So proud of every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. We got it all? Got the balcony too? 
Oh, you guys are great. Not yet. Balcony. Is the balcony coming? Got it right there. Thank you. Everybody stretch your hands toward the altar and say, Oh, God. Oh, God. We know. We know. About a thousand times more. About a thousand times more. We want to tell you tonight. We want to tell you tonight. We are so happy. We are so happy. That our pastor. That our pastor. Our leaders. Our leaders. Allow us. Allow us. To take an offering. To take an offering. So we can show you. So we can show you. We live by faith. And we live by faith. And we want to please you. And we want to please you. And we are cheerful giver. And we, we are, are cheerful, cheerful giver. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say a thousand times more. A thousand times more. Say a thousand times more. A thousand times more. Thousand Turn times to somebody more. and say a thousand times more. A thousand times more. A thousand times more. Take us out of here. God bless you. Oh, Sunday is going to be great. <laughs> A thousand times more. Wow. I get so inspired every time I read that. And it's really, when I read it, I say, it, does it say that? And here God said, yes. You, you see it. And you have to say yes with God when God writes in Deuteronomy, I will bless you a thousand times more. I hope you receive that tonight. Two weeks from tonight, two weeks from tonight, start Summer Sizzle. It's the outdoors with the tents, uh, with cooking, with uh, fun, and, and for old and young. The basketballs will be bouncing, uh, the, uh, the soccer balls will be moving, the children are gonna have a blast, and it's an environment in which we're all gonna have so much fun after the Wednesday night service. So at 7.15, 7.20, we move outside, and here we smell the good cooking, and, and uh, we have such fun on Summer Sizzle, and we invite our friends, and, and, and we just, uh, there's music, there's uh, a special uh, bands playing on Wednesday nights. Now that will start two weeks. I made a mistake in the beginning of the program today. I said the 15th, but it's the 14th. And I will be starting the series six Wednesday nights on, I believe, Bigger, Better, Bolder Blessings. This is my book hardback, some 300 pages. Now, we won't get through all of it, but let me tell you, we're going to go through this and we're going to take a journey on how to get bigger, better, bolder blessings. And you can get this book in the bookstore and you will follow on Wednesday night. That's two weeks from tonight. And we are going to experience great things. Let me tell you some other good things that are going to happen. Father's Day. Father's Day is the 18th. We are honoring every father and it's going to be incredible. Dad's best day. That's what it's called, Dad's best day. Now think about this, we're gonna do Cats in the Cradle, Dance with My Father Again, you know? That's a famous song. Don't Blink, that's a famous song. Uh, all of those songs are going to be on Father's Day and every father will get a gift and we're gonna honor every single father. We are excited about Father's Day so I want to encourage all fathers and you to encourage your father and to get your father here because we're going to give him a gift. We're going to make him a champion. It's going to be, it's going to be dad's best day. So you don't want to miss that. And then I want to say something about the graduation. The graduation is the week before and that's when we graduate uh, high schoolers and we graduate college students. Now, let me say this. If your, if your family member, one of your family members, even if it's a cousin, if it's a nephew, if it's a grandson, granddaughter, and they don't even come to Family Christian Center, but you participate in coming to Family Christian Center, we want to honor them. So I, we got to get their name. You can go right on the app or you can contact Rashawn, our youth pastor, or call the office and say, my daughter, my son is going to be there on graduation day at the 1030 service. Now here's what's gonna happen. They gotta be there at 10 o'clock in the gym getting ready to be lined up. And then we line them up behind the curtain and the camera's on. And they then, we honor each one of them. And if they have a cap and gown, please wear it. If they have a school color, please wear it. And we're gonna get to meet them. 
and I get to pray over them and give them a gift and we all get to honor them. And that's going to happen at 1025, five minutes before service. So please, everybody, if you know a graduate or of a friend, somebody that you say, well, I have a, I'm really, really, really um, excited about my friend, uh, friend who graduated from college or from high school. Can they be involved? Yes, yes, yes. We want to honor every graduate. They don't have to be a member of Family Christian Center. So it's a great time for us to do big outreach and, and we can bless them and give them a gift and honor them. And that is on June 11th, is that right? June 11th, graduation day, is at 10-third on June 11th. Now they have to be in the gym at 10 o'clock, in the gym at Family Christian Center. They'll be lined up, there's special refreshments, and we're gonna honor them. And at 10.25, five minutes before service, we're gonna honor them at the 10.30 service. I'm excited about graduates who are graduating from high school and from college. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait till Friday morning prayer. Can't wait till this Sunday, it's gonna be great. Good things are happening. We're gonna make the announcement of 4-H. 4-H, Hotel Hallelujah and Heartbreak Hotel. The dates are gonna be given in two weeks. And also I wanna tell you that, uh, would you, there's just some great things that are happening with the Equestrian Center and what God is doing. So we have a summer full of great things that are going to happen. You don't want to miss what God is gonna do. So until Sunday, get ready. Eagle's Nest is coming. Uh, Yellow Brick Road is coming this fall. There's some great little straight sermons. Oh, oh, I gotta tell you. So they came to me and they said, did you know that Raiders of the Lost Ark, Harrison Ford's movie's coming out next month? And it's supposed to be huge in all the theaters. Well, I said, hey, if they're gonna do it at the movie theaters, then we need to do Raiders of the Lost Ark right here on our stage. So when that movie comes out and hits, get ready. You're gonna be, I'm gonna do the illustration of Indiana Muncie, might as well. Hey, it's been great in the past and we're just gonna have so much fun learning about God's word in different ways as we illustrate it. I just pray now that you receive the thousand times blessing that is in the book of Deuteronomy. I pray it upon your health, I pray it upon your money, I pray it upon your family, I pray it upon you, and let God just usher that in, and I hope you've received that word tonight. Remember, remember our television program is on channel 26 in Chicago at 6.30 a.m. for one hour, Family Christian Center called, Yes You Can, tell everybody about it. Every Sunday morning, I'm excited about God and I'm excited that you tuned in. If you haven't given, you can give now and support the ministry of Family Christian Center. We love you, we thank you, and may God bless you 1,000 times more.